All right, time to get started animating. First, you need to have something to animate, which will be this character and gonna have its idle, maybe a little dance at the end and a big jump. It start out with a slow run. So jump, dance move, a run, and how about a walk also. Dragging all that to the assets. Select the happy idol, which contains the skinned version of the character with an animation. All the other FBXs are just animations. Selecting this one, and first thing would be to would be to extract the textures. This way it'll show up as you expect it in the viewport. Either create a new folder or select a an existing folder underneath your assets and select that folder and all those textures will unpack into there and then your character will look like this in the scene. A dialog box will come up to fix the normal maps. Click on fix now and you're almost ready to go. Select your character under its rig. Instead of generic, select humanoid for avatar definition only for the skin, take five, only for the one that contains the actual mesh. Use create from this model and click apply. You can go under animation and you can preview that animation. And there's the idle animation. To make it loop, under animation, click on loop. And you're going to want to do that for, I think, most of your animations. Have them loop. Click apply. And if you didn't click apply on clicking off there, the apply button is always at the bottom of the inspector right there. For this animation name, I'm going to rename it idle, making it a little more friendly to pick. And then you can scroll on down and click apply. Moving on to the other animations, clicking on big jump. Going to the rig, instead of generic, select humanoid and avatar definition. Don't use create from this model. Instead, copy from other avatar, and that will be a copy from this one that you just did, the happy idol one. Double click that and then click apply. For a jump, you know I said all your animations will have looping might not want to loop jump over and over again unless it's doing something very acrobatic. Going to slow run, go to go to its rig, humanoid, avatar definition, copy from another avatar, you guessed it. It's gonna be from Happy Idol, click apply, go to its animation, loop that animation, and preview it here. Give it a better name than this. It could be run and click on apply. Let me make sure I did that for jump. Going back to jump, name it jump. And click on apply. Okay, now that the animations are set up, it's time to build out the animations on the timeline, which includes how to churn your character and how to blend in between different poses. Next part is working with the timeline. Before you do that, right click within the hierarchy and create an empty game object. And this empty game object will hold the character, name it character. So that's off on the left side, on the right side, Go to the inspector with that game object selected and click on reset. Drag your character to the hierarchy on the left and not just drag it out there, but drag and drop it right on that empty clip game object. And that way this game object is the parent of your character. So you can scale it without having to worry about changing of animations. There's lots of benefits of having a game object 
be within another game object, this hierarchy. I'm going to shrink my character a little bit more, like this, rotate it, and this is all happening on the outside game object, not the actual animated character. And let me position my character, let's say here. It's going to do a little walk and then, I don't know, jump or run and then a jump. Let's get started with the animation part. Go to Window, Sequencing, Timeline. Click on the character and create a timeline for that character by clicking on this Create button. Name it wherever you want. Go call it Timeline 3. Go drag this window a little lower and dock it right above my assets. This way I can still see my screen and still get access to my assets. Then drag this happy idol, which is the character, down to the left side of the timeline and select add animation track. Then lock this timeline so it'll stay in focus, won't be lost among the other interfaces. First animation to apply is the idle animation. To do that, right click right here on that same track but underneath the numbers and select add from animation clip select the idle just double click it and there it is if you want it to loop just click the end of the idle and just drag it and you can see these numbers represent the number of times it loops first time second time doesn't have to be full loop I'm just going to do one and a quarter for this demo Scrub the timeline by just dragging it like this. Time to make your character walk forward a little bit. Right click here and select add from animation clip. Select the walk. Not the tiger walk, but the regular walk. Bump that over here. There's my character beginning to walk. It takes two steps. You want to take a third step let me just drag this open a little bit because it's loopable your character can keep on your character can keep on walking forward all right it seems like it needs to take its first jump here but what if it didn't want to take a direct route you wanted your character to kind of i don't know walk maybe over here before it jumped let me drag this back. So here's my first walk, a bit of another walk here. Let me make that a full walk cycle. Copy, Command-C, Control-C. With that clip selected, copy it, Command-C, Control-C, and then paste it. And we hit our one problem, which we'll fix quickly, and then we'll make our character chart. So you can see that you walk, and now because I have another walking clip, not just looping, it's going to jump back to the beginning. To make it continuously walk between clips or continuous action between clips, select this clip, right click it, and match offset to previous clip. And it'll now pick up that walk from that previous clip. And the reason I used two walk clips is I didn't want it to walk straight like this, I wanted to change its direction. So under rotation, I'm going to maybe type in 60 for 60 degrees. And right now it does this sharp turn. To blend in between clips, just take a clip and just drag it into the previous clip and you'll get this blended space. That's a little too much, so the feet are kind of hovering, which is cool if you're not on Earth, but since this creature character's on Earth. Now, the character's going like this. I just wanted to demo how to make things churn. To make it churn back to the edge here, 
going to copy and paste this same clip, right click, match offset to previous, and set its Y back to zero. So it's gonna take a step, maybe instead of zero, how about negative 15? Now it's facing this way, where it's going to leap. Right click in this track, add from animation clip, select jump, and of course now your character will be jumping, but we have that problem where it's starting all the way back there again. That's a mighty jump. Select this clip, right click on it, match offset to the previous. And it's going right through the rock. Don't want that. For its position along the Y axis, going to lift it up. So click on the letter Y and left click and drag, pull it up. So it looks like it takes a little leap and then maybe needs to go up a little bit more. And then, oh no, it's not gonna make it in there, is it? Poor character. Right now it's floating on air and the target doesn't even notice. want to land on the target's back, we could just push that character. Now, I don't think the targets would be very happy about that. So instead of landing on the target's back, let's not have that happen. I'm going to trim this clip by dragging it backwards. So it ends here. And Pick up a walk, let's say this walk, copy it, paste it right here, right click, match offset to previous, push it down along the Y axis so now it's in the enclosure and let's face it this way. Just drag on that Y and blend these two together. Here's the animation. Don't know why it does a sharp turn other than I'm just giving a demo. It was a good demo moment. And I don't know why the character jumps a little too soon. I think it needs to do another leap real quickly to get out of here. Right click on that area, add from animation clip. Let's get that other jump going. I think it's too soon to do a dance. Right click on the jump clip. Match offset to previous clip. That's a little better. And now it's out. Oh, right through there. Don't want that to happen. So right here. Let's say that looks good for the moment. Let me trim the clip to that area. I'm going to copy the same clip, paste it, and let me find that moment right here. I'm going to trim it the other way. And lifting up this clip, so position along the Y, a little bit higher. Let me blend these two together. Ooh, that's bad too, right? So stopping there and let me lift it up a lot more. All right, got a little stunt going there. And this is the part where 
it does its dance. Finally. Right click. Add from animation clips. And where's the dance? Right there. That's a long dance. Put those two together by pushing it into the previous clip. You right click. Match offset to previous clip. And it's the part where the tiger comes and just pushes the character out of its enclosure. Pulling back out. Saving this. The next part would be to animate the camera. And that will be covered in another video. Let's play it. So click this icon right here, play the timeline. Turns for no reason. And then it's out of the scene. And we can see the rest of the scene by dragging the camera over here. So the next part of the animation is dealing with the camera. You can have the camera follow this character. The simplest way to have this happen is right now, this is our game view staring off somewhere else. The simplest way to get this to happen is to have this camera to be a child of our character. First, select the camera and go under game object, align with view. That way our camera is now, our game camera is now staring out of our view. Then drag this camera and just drop it on the character. Now you can see in the preview, look at that action. That will correct a little later on. That was a quick way to get this done. A little too much spinning. Let's look at it in the game view. Click on play. All right, as I mentioned, this isn't the right way to do it. There's a better way to do it. We could have the camera actually track the action. We could also have the camera just animate on its own in the timeline, which will be the subject of the next video. Here I was just showing a very quick way. I'm going to put that camera back where it belongs, away from the character, and deal with the animation of the character in another video. Hope you had fun, some fun. And clicking on the scene again. It's time for you to download your own characters and get started animating in Unity.